Hey what's up guys, Totally Dubbed here and today I'm going to give you an overview and a review of um, two Perix products I got sent for review. The first product in question as you can see right in front of you is the Perix PX5000 which comes in at around £70. It is a um, fully mechanical keyboard uh, relying on the Cherry MX black switches. And I will also be briefly looking at, at the end of the video, the Perix DX2000 mousepad, uh, which I'll just get into uh, towards the end and briefly cover it because there's not much to say about the mousepad. But to go onto the um, keyboard um, is what I'm going to start off first, and I think you guys are going to enjoy this review. So first of all, what you get included in the, um, in the package is a key puller which is used to pulling out keys so you just do that and pull out a key uh, this is useful for cleaning and um, well mainly cleaning uh, make cleaning the keyboard and making sure that everything's okay with your keyboard you get four little rubber uh, bits over here which go at the uh, underneath of the keyboard which I'll get to in a second and show you where they go and you get a set of keys now the keys I've already exchanged um, these are the uh, just normal ones that come with it, the black keys. And as you can see on my keyboard, I've already already got six silver keys, and these are the arrow keys which are located like that. As you can see, they've got W and an arrow sign right there, and you've got the WASD keys over there. It's really nice that Perix provided these keys because they provide a nice distinguish distinguish look uh, for gamers out there. Uh, it's very easy to see WASD in the dark with or without LEDs. And obviously, um, this provides a little bit of a different look. I've not been um, gaming that much recently, and um, just for typing, actually, I've been using this keyboard. And I must say, I really do like this little bit of di different look. It just provides a little bit of, um, shall I say, zing to the keyboard. Anyway, pro co continuing with what you get uh, with the keyboard, you also get a driver disk, uh, which also comes with the software, and you get a manual, which is very useful. So, moving on to the actual features of this keyboard. So, as I said, this is a mechanical keyboard, and you'll be able to tell um, over there that it's got black switches. So, what I'm going to do is turn down the light so you guys can see the black switch in there. And the black switches are uh, particularly used by um, mainly gamers. The reason why is because um, black switches are a little bit harder to press. Um, therefore, they make it a little bit more, um, a little harder for you to accidentally press a key <clears throat> whilst you're gaming. So that means if you're pressing WASD and you want to press another key suddenly, then you're not going to accidentally press it. Therefore, when it comes to typing, this keyboard is not a keyboard I would particularly suggest. But with that said, that is very subjective. It's an all subjective opinion of what switch you choose. I just should let you know that I have got a um, uh, MX uh, brown keyboard and that is the Logitech G710 Plus and for me personally I much prefer brown switches rather than black switches but as I said before that is very subjective, well extremely subjective, it's really your typing preference and your gaming preference. But if you're someone that likes to press a little bit harder or um, doesn't want uh, keys to be accidentally pressed um, out of um, just by you moving your fingers, then a um, MX uh, black uh, switch, cherry black switch is what I should say, is the um, switch you'll be looking for. So that aside, um, and a little information uh, for you on the switches, um, I can, I'm going to progress with this review and not mention the um, hardness of the uh, switches simply because I believe that is purely subjective for, so for someone to say I didn't like this keyboard for typing some other person might say I absolutely love this keyboard for typing because it's all about personal preference personally I would not choose it and I don't see why you would use it personally for, uh, for, um, for typing as it's a little bit harder but Overall, it is a good keyboard anyway, and I've been using this for about a week now uh, without any problems, been gaming and um, uh, mainly typing on this, and I haven't had any problems. I have realized that I am missing several keys sometimes when um, typing, uh, simply because I, um, I'm not used to be pressing uh, that hard on the switches, and uh, more so, the spacing of the keys are slightly um, closer together than what I'm used to in comparison to my uh, G710+. Plus. But anyway, 
Let's get on uh, with the other features of the keyboard. So first of all, um, the cable that comes with this keyboard is a little bit short. It's on 1.8 meters long, and it has a USB and uh, microphone and uh, audio um, input. The reason you have those inputs is because, first of all, the USB is to power on the keyboard, but it's also um, provided over here to give you um, a USB a USB um, uh, input. You've also you got microphone and your audio right there for headphones. This is really good by Perix for including this because it allows you to um, easily plug uh, plug and play without going uh, to your PC. So I really like the addition of this by Perix. Moving on to the features, you can see that this doesn't come with a palm rest or isn't um, made for one. But that said, I think the integrated palm rest over here is just about enough. It's just um, just at a right length that it's not too intrusive and, and doesn't make the uh, keyboard too big and therefore makes it quite comfortable for typing or gaming. At the back side of the keyboard, if you remember at the beginning of the video I mentioned the four rubber bits, well here they are, the four rubber bits are over here and it's good that Perix included a replacement just in case these get rubbed off over the years then you can replace them quite easily. At the top you can see you've got the wire um, that can be put in different positions. Um, I've put it to the middle position because if I run it through over here it doesn't, um, the wire doesn't reach my uh, PC comfortably. At the top you've also got these to raise the keyboard. What I like about these is that they're terminated with a rubber um, rubber coat, shall I say. So that means that it doesn't uh, slip in any respect. So if you have it flat, it's going to be nice um, and flush and not slip. And if you have it up, it's not going to slip either. So that is really good by Perix and design wise. There's no complaints there. And I must uh, commend them for uh, their efforts in that respect. So now going on to the other features of the keyboard itself. So you saw at the beginning that um, I adjusted the backlight and that is possible by pressing FN and the scroll lock button over there. So as you can see, if I press the scroll lock button, it adjusts the brightness. So you can go down to different uh, percentages and have it completely off if you wanted to, or you can press it again and it will start, start pulsating. This is quite nice and it's a very nice feature. I quite like this pulsating feature. But that said, I leave it 100% brightness and find it quite um, quite useful and quite nice to have. As you'll be able to see, there's certain keys that are not illuminated and that is because when you press them, they get illuminated. For example, the caps lock button, if I press it, that makes it illuminated. This makes it quite useful because you don't have to have any separate uh, indicators like the normal keyboards have. This is instead um, illuminated when it's activated. Similarly for the num lock and similarly for the scroll lock. I think this is really cool and a really cool feature. It's very useful to quickly tell if you are on a caps lock or not uh, rather than actually looking at uh, the keyboard or any sort of LED lights on the side. You can see over here it says gaming, well hopefully you'll be able to see that it says gaming at the top and this can be activated by pressing FN gaming. What this does is it disables the Windows key. However, through the software you can re-enable it even if you are on gaming mode. So that's um, quite cool by Perix for having that. Uh, just a simple press makes you on gaming mode and simple press off makes you go off gaming mode. If you, be, if you can see at the top over here you've got different little settings. So you've got different things over here to adjust the pull rate and whatnot directly from the, from, from the keyboard itself rather than going via the software which is pretty cool. Also you've got play, uh, pause, stop, uh, previous and next uh, for your media controls. And you've also got uh, launch your media player, you've also got um, mute, volume, up, uh, volume down and volume up. This is really good because you have um, quick access to media controls and this makes it uh, very useful for um, controlling your media. I have tested this as with Windows Media Player and it works perfectly fine and it's extremely responsive. Finally you've got four, um, six different um, buttons over here uh, nominated L1 to L6 and when pressed these uh, activate um, a macro. In my case I have uh, programmed them to open for example um, L6 to open up my Google Chrome and what I've done with that is uh, made it to Windows uh, key 4 and Windows key 4 opens the fourth um, fourth icon on my taskbar on Windows 7 and so therefore when I press it it opens Chrome. So I'll just show you that on the on the PC itself. 
as you can see the fourth icon over here is Google Chrome so if I press it it opens it up like that and it's extremely responsive as you're able to see and I very much um, like the addition uh, that Perix um, did in that respect so now I'm gonna move it on to the software side of things and then finally round it up by my thoughts and opinions of the keyboard so going to the software the software is pretty simple and pretty straightforward um, to see and to use it's um, easy to distinguish um, the different tabs um, that you might need uh, for your for your keyboard but um, with that said it seems a little bit um, misplaced the reason why is because I think this keyboard is an OEM keyboard which has been rebranded by Perix meaning that the, the keyboard that you see over here is not the keyboard that you actually have um, in front of you but it doesn't really matter because the functionalities are pretty much the same under the main control tab you can click on the certain keys and you can change the uh, key setting to anything you want this is pretty cool in case you don't use any of the keys for example the numlock keys you can change them to whatever you want and this is useful for gamers if they want say for example that one to be number um, to be R for example to be closer to their mouse or whatnot so this is quite cool um, for gamers out there especially MMORPG gamers out there uh, making it quite useful as you'll be able to see the macro button that I was talking about before you've got the M1 to M6 as you can see M6 I've got as Windows plus 4 you can change this to certain different things for example on multimedia tab you can say volume up or volume down or open player or whatnot but the multimedia things are all included at the top of the keyboard so they're kinda of pointless if you ask me but you can have these as Windows uh, things so for example run command show desktop calculator um, or you can assign a shortcut so if I want to assign a shortcut as you can see what I've assigned to is Windows plus uh, single key as 4 therefore you can open certain hotkeys in uh, Windows 8 you might be able to open different hotkeys as well and therefore it is quite useful um, for having these uh, macros to be really quick and accessible um, on your keyboard Finally, on the advanced settings, you'll be able to see the polling rate, which I've set to 1000 Hz, the key response time, which I've set to 1 millisecond, the window key setting that I was talking about on gaming mode or, or not, and the light intensity, which can also be um, adjusted via the, uh, the software um, instead. You've also got uh, six different profiles, which is very useful, so you can have it for six different uh, gaming profiles, and you can activate them if you want. I've just I only need one profile so I've had it there so in terms of the uh, the software it is very nice but it's a shame it's not tailored to the actual keyboard itself it is rather an OEM um, OEM um, keyboard which is just a bit of a shame because it lets the um, product down in terms of um, in terms of uh, its looks and um, I don't know, it's looks and feel of it on, on, the, on the software side of things. But anyway, software aside, because it does work as it intends to work, the keyboard itself is very nice. Um, I really like it, and I've been using it, as I said, for about a week, and I haven't really regretted um, my MX uh, Brown. But with that said, my personal preference is an MX Brown uh, switched keyboard, simply because it's easier to press and therefore requires less effort. Especially for me, which I do quite a lot of writing, either on forums or reviews and whatnot, I found that the, uh, the switches were a little bit harder to press. Um, and finally, I should also mention the, the this is a US keyboard uh, layout. So I'm not going to uh, put that down again, uh, because the US keyboard layout is clearly specified on Amazon.co.uk. Um, so they have no intention of bringing a UK layout out. But with that said, it doesn't really bother me that much, because it's only three or four keys which are different which is the two the three and over here so this is usually the at sign for the UK layout this is usually the pound sign as in the GBP pound sign and over here it's usually um, I think the apostrophe or something like that so it doesn't really bother me but obviously if you're looking at your keyboard these are these couple of keys are not going to be the same so do bear that in mind if um, that's going to bother you that said you can change your windows layout to US layout uh, in case um, you are worried about that but to me I've left it UK layout and just 
gone with um, what I know as number two and three and this um, letter over here, uh, this key, sorry, over here, R. Um, so it hasn't really bothered me that much, but obviously it could bother people um, uh, which are looking for UK layout keyboards. So I'm going to um, end the review of the keyboard by typing on it and making you listen to it and then comparing it to my MX Brown uh, keyboard and finally I'm going to uh, bring it back uh, to the mouse pad and um, just look at the mouse pad. So I'm going to open a Word document and I'm going to type um, normally uh, as I would uh, on the keyboard. So as you saw, sometimes I had to come back and I did make uh, just a few uh, spelling errors uh, whilst typing, but that said, I do make quite a few spelling errors anyway uh, when typing, but as you saw, it is a reasonably quiet keyboard and um, and um, it, it, you can type um, quite fast if you're a fast typer, but with that said, it is a little bit harder to press, um, as I stated. You can only, you will be only be able to see this um, if you can actually feel it yourself. But anyway, I'm going to type on my MX Brown keyboard as well, so you guys can hear the difference in terms of the switches. So as you were able to see, I was much more um, comfortable uh, typing on the MX Brown switches. It just felt so much more, much more natural to me um, in that respect. So these are MX Brown switches, and this is uh, MX uh, Black uh, switches. So as you can see over here, so I'll just press the keys. I should also state that the Logitech does come with these O-rings which are made to silence the keys a little bit but with that said even without the O-rings on the Perix, uh, Perix uh, PX5000 they're very silent so you'll be able to be uh, nice and silent when typing on this but that said do bear in mind this is a mechanical keyboard and any mechanical keyboard, no matter what switch, uh, possibly the red might be uh, a little bit bit more silent, is still going to be louder than your normal uh, membrane keyboard. So when typing you are going to uh, have a little bit of noise, uh, so therefore if you're in a work environment this might not be ideal, but if at a home environment and you're not going to be disturbing anyone, I don't see any problem with that. Obviously some people allude to noise, which can be an issue, and if noise is an issue then in all honesty I wouldn't even look at any sort of mechanical keyboard. Even the MX uh, red switches uh, do have a little bit of noise to them, and more than you would find in a membrane based keyboard, a non mechanical keyboard. So, in all honesty, noise is um, a certain factor to consider, but in all honesty, if you're looking at a mechanical keyboard, I think noise shouldn't be on your top priority list um, in terms of deciding on what keyboard you should want. Instead, you should be looking at where you're going to be using the key uh, keyboard, um, in what sort of applications, for example, typing or gaming, um, or just, I don't know, um, browsing the internet. Um, and the functionalities it offers. For example, the, the PX5000 has media functionalities, it's got gaming functionalities, it's got LED functionalities, it's got audio and USB functionalities, um, and its price tag is relatively um, competitive. So, overall, in my opinion, the keyboard is absolutely excellent. I really did enjoy it. Um, even though I am not a big fan of the uh, black switches, I do think that the black switches will appeal to a lot of people out there, especially gamers, because I think gamers really do benefit from having a keyboard that is a bit more uh, tougher to press. And um, in all honesty, even though um, 
I type a lot and I prefer the uh, brown switches, I got accustomed to these uh, black switches pretty quickly and was able to adjust to them um, by pressing a little bit harder um, when typing. So I read a few Amazon reviews on that which were saying do not buy this if you're typing and whatnot. I just think that's personal preference and I think it's very subjective to say don't buy this based on uh, my typing experience. I think that's completely wrong and completely flawed. So overall um, I can't really fault this keyboard, I can give it a full 10 out of 10 and that's what I'm going to give it because I think it really hits every single key, pun intended, uh, perfectly. Um, it's got the right functionalities, for example the USB and audio inputs, it's got the right feel to it, it's got the right accessories, um, it's got the right size, it's got the right um, software which works, it's got the right um, functionalities that work, it's got a nice competitive price at £70, it's got cool LED which looks very nice, it's very responsive, it feels good, it's not too loud, uh, not overly loud, let's put it that way for um, uh, black switches, it has nice functionalities like the caps lock uh, illuminating and whatnot. Um, so overall, I really can't fault this keyboard. I've really enjoyed using it, and I'm gonna be kind of sad to go back to my MX uh, Brown switch. But with that said, um, I uh, won't be um, won't be missing it too much just because of my personal preference. But overall, if you guys are looking for a brown a black switched keyboard. Uh, black switch mechanical keyboard, I definitely would consider Perix PX5000 on top of your list because it is a really good keyboard and very solidly built as well. Um, so very impressed with it. Again, as I said, the only flaws are the, um, the fact that it hasn't got the UK layout or other layouts and that the cable is just a little bit short. But those th two things um, can be overlooked in my opinion uh, because they're mentioned in the description. Anyway, finally, rounding off this video, I'm going to move on to the uh, mouse pad. So the mouse pad over here was provided by Perix as well, so thanks again to them for uh, for sending me this out. And as you can see, this is the DX2000. The DX2000 is quite nice. It's got a quite different feel to it. As you'll be able to see, if, I, if, if you look closely, it's got a kind of like um, rough-ish finish to it. Um, so... It is a nicely stitched, um, nicely stitched mouse pad, which means it will last quite nice and long. And it's got a nice rubber um, sole, which means it won't be sliding around on your desk. It's also got a nice little logo, the Perix logo over there, and the DX2000 uh, logo over there. And so what I do, I put it down there and use it with my mouse. What I found is that the key, uh, the sorry, the mouse slides very well. Um, and is extremely precise. Uh, for some reason, I had to reduce the DPI uh, settings whilst uh, using this mouse pad particularly over my um, Overclockers UK one, simply because it was very precise. I, I was actually very surprised on how precise um, it became and how much more um, attention uh, it was doing to the, what, what sort of effect it was doing to the mouse. So I actually had to reduce the DPI to use this on my, on my, um, on my um, on Windows, because um, it felt like the sensitivity had somewhat increased. Uh, when in reality, nothing has increased except for the mouse pad changing. I was quite surprised, in my opinion, uh, because I didn't expect the mouse pad to really do that. But it really does, especially for the fact that it only comes in at eight pounds for the size and the quality finish. It is very good. But I should mention with that, that is a kind of a, a hard, um, hard surface. Therefore, it does feel a little bit weird um, on your on your hands. Um, I was used to using the Overclockers UK uh, mouse pad, which was very soft and glided uh, much better, and therefore didn't irritate my hands that much. Whereas the DX2000 um, has this very roughish finish, um, not like sandpaper, but quite rough, um, and it therefore made my palm a little bit uneasy as you can see my palm is resting over there it made it a bit uneasy and I didn't really enjoy uh, using this mouse pad but with that said with the precision it gave um, over my other mouse pad and the fact that it had a nice finish and it came at uh, only eight pounds I think this mouse pad is very good but with that said I'm gonna give it a four out of five star review um, simply because I didn't really like its finish um, and how this would be comfortable for long uh, long periods of use is, to be honest, beyond me. But that said, that could be a little bit subject subjective. 
um, so I'm not going to uh, fault it that much in that respect. So overall, it's a good mouse pad, but it's um, you definitely have to try it before you buy it, or at least try and look into it a little bit more um, and compare it to other mouse pads out there. But this is a little bit rougher finish uh, mouse pad, and therefore might not suit you um, best if you like moving a, uh, around a lot uh, on your on your uh, on your mouse. So overall, the two um, Perix products are really nice. I really liked reviewing these two products, especially the PX5000. Um, as I said, I really, really like this keyboard, and I really do recommend it for anyone looking for a black mechanical switch keyboard um, that is capable of um, having different functionalities and um, also providing you a good gaming experience. So there you go guys, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, I know it's been a little bit long but um, hopefully it's been um, useful for you guys and that um, this has, um, will, be, will help you in, uh, in um, purchasing the products. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please do like the video, um, it always do means, uh, means a lot to me if you uh, can also share it or favourite it. And do let me know your comments below of the video itself and the products. It's always good to have some feedback um, from viewers. And if you do like to purchase these products, you can check out the link in the description below to the Amazon UK page and you'll be able to product uh, purchase this product directly. Anyway guys, I've been Totally Dubbed and this has been the Perix PX5000 mouse and the DX2000 uh, mouse pad which is just on the right over here. And yeah, take care guys. Totally Dubbed out. Bye bye.